Hey, Jim. <clears throat> How are you doing, Bruce? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Hi, Bonnie. Yep. Have you got a lot of reservations for tonight? Oh, last time I checked, it was 22. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. Get a lot of rain over at your place last night, Bruce, or this morning? <clears throat> Three and a half inches. Yeah, I had <laughs> I had two and a half in our rain gauge. Yeah, <clears throat> I had two rain gauges. Uh, one had three and a quarter, the other one had three and a half. So <laughs> yeah. I guess that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I know when I left this morning, um, the ditches were full. I know that. Yeah. <clears throat> That they were. It was like a river running down through here. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet. <laughs> I wonder if um, we're close to um, getting even now as far as the rain totals go. Well, and the weather, they said we're still six and a half inches shy. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> but Madison but, only got an inch of rain today, too, though. Pardon? Uh, Madison only got what do you say an inch and a half inch and a half of rain since last Friday. Is all well, Madison. Yeah, they only oh, got wow. Three tenths yeah, they of an inch today. Pretty, <laughs> they got it pretty good though. That before, so that, right before that one we didn't get any. So yeah. Yeah. Poor Crawford County got another four to seven inches today though. Please. <laughs> That'll bring the Mississippi up. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff washed out today. I'll bet. I'll bet. It always floods so bad there anyway. Yeah. It's just the good old Kickapoo River. Hey, Dwayne, welcome.
Okay, everyone, it's seven o'clock. I think we'll get started. There may be a few joining us, but we'll uh, get started anyway, so we get through this. First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to the My LCI My Lion training session. Uh, also with us tonight is our uh, GMT coordinator, Lion Adam Croson from Sun Prairie and our incoming GST coordinator from Sun Prairie, Steve Pogue. And I am Lion Bruce Voigt. I'll be the administrator next year. I've been the GST for the last three years and uh, Steve is taking over for me. Um, just to uh, what we're gonna hope to go through tonight is first of all, how to register for your Lion account. I'm sure most of you are registered already, but I'm going to go through this because anyone in your club can register and uh, uh, that's something that uh, uh, every lion should do because they can use my line as well as any of the officers. Uh, we'll go through the registering procedure, then we'll go through my LCI and my lion and uh, then hopefully have some time for questions. If you have questions along the way, please put them in the chat box. Uh, Lion Adam will monitor that and interrupt me with questions that are pertinent. Um, if there's something you don't understand as we're going through it, please interrupt. You have the capability to mute and unmute yourselves. So uh, we'll get started with the registration and my Lion. I'm gonna share my registration screen. Okay, and we will <clears throat> Okay, uh, registering to use the Lions member portal. Uh, that gives you access to my LCI, my Lion, the Lion Lions Learning Center, and the shopping app. Any member can register to enter the member portal. And to do so, you first go to lionsclubs.org. 
click on the member login, which is right there. And that'll bring you to the sign in screen. If you have a login already, you just sign in. If not, you need to register. And there are two ways to register. First of all, if you know your member ID, it's much easier. So uh, you can get your member ID off of the Lion Magazine or contact your club secretary. Or if they don't know it, you can always contact me or anyone on the GAT team. They'll be able to get your member number for you. So what you put in is your name, last name, and your member ID. Click continue. And it brings you, and if you had a, a member number, it brings you right to this screen. Uh, what it says is you'll, they will be sending you a verification code to your email address. You click continue and you'll res you will get a verification code to your email. You'll have nine minutes to complete the login. So once you get that, it, the time remaining will show there. And if you don't get the code or don't get it in in time, you can ask them to resend the code and they will do so. Once you put the code in, click continue and it will get, bring you to a page to create your account. The first thing you're gonna do is put in your Lion account ID, which will have been put in for you already because you used your email to register. If you're going to continue to use that, just leave it there. Create a password per the instructions that they give you there. And then read and agree to the privacy policy and the terms of use. Click continue and you'll get a congratulations that you have successfully registered. Then you can just sign in. And it'll bring you back to this screen where you put in your Lion account ID, your password, and click sign in. That'll bring you to the member portal. We'll go through this in a little bit, but before we do that, we'll go through how to register if you do not know your member ID. It's very similar. You put in your name, first name, last name, and click continue. It will ask you, depending on if it found you, it may find you just from your name and, and it will take you to another screen. But if it doesn't find you, it will bring you to this screen where you will put in your club name. And there is a pull down menu that you can use that is there. Put in your email address and continue. If, if, you, if they cannot find you from that, they will ask you to fill out a support form where you will contact customer support. First and last name, uh, how you would like to be contacted by your email or your cell phone, and then a brief description of the problem you're having, and then click submit. Most times it's going to find you if you put in the pertinent information that it asks for your name, your club, your email address, it's going to find you. And in this case, it, it found Lion Steve and it brought up his email and his mobile number. The email is highlighted, so that's where the verification code would be sent. So you just click continue. The code you should have received, same procedure, you have nine minutes to put it in. Enter the code. If you don't get it in in time, resend it, and then just click continue. And again, put in the ID, create the password, answer the questions, continue. Congratulations. You're, and then you can go to the sign in. And that procedure is exactly the same as before. And then that brings you to the member portal. And I said we'd go through what this looks like when we got here this time. Um, 
as it says, the member portal. And there are several icons. First one is the shopping icon if you want to go to the Lions store. The learn icon is for the Lions Learning Center. Insights will give you information about membership, service, uh, donations, that sort of thing. My LCI, which is the app where we report our membership uh, information each month. And then My Lion, which is for reporting service each month. Uh, some of the other things on here, there's the connect, which is not in use. Uh, there are resources down below, which uh, uh, would take you, one of the things in there is the MyLion Facebook forum. So if you are having a problem on MyLion, you can check that out. And there's a lot of other support information there. Finally, there's the service metrics, which will show up there. And that is the summary of your club service. And uh, that is the same thing that you will see when we log into my lion. But that is the, the other thing that is in there is there is that take a tour and you can uh, do that and it will lead you through each of the sections on the member portal page and what each of those does. So that's it for the registration. Um, is, does anybody have any questions at this time? If you do, put them in the member portal. Okay. So the next thing we're going to go to is my LCI. Okay, so what I'm sharing now is the login screen for lionsclubs.org. And as I mentioned in the login, here's the member login. I click on that. And it will bring up the sign in. I'm already signed in, so it took me straight to the member portal. We're going to click on my LCI. And again, my LCI is the app that we use for reporting membership. And membership is something that needs to be reported each month. Amen. Uh, Here we go. Try it again. Okay. <clears throat> My LCI, as I said, is, is uh, where you re we each club reports their membership. I'm going to select my title as club secretary so the screen will look a little bit more like what you see when you log in. There are six sections on here. One is the My Tasks. And also in this My Tasks, each month you will see report your monthly membership or report no membership changes. And if you have no membership changes during the month, all you have to do is simply click report no membership changes and you're done for the month. If you have a change like an address, um, a new member, a drop member, all of that can be done by clicking on report your membership. Uh, it has to, your, here is the summary of your club information, your personal information. Down below is the membership reporting status for your club. So if you have reported uh, membership each month, you will have a check in each of those boxes. Now it's going to be blank when we roll over to July. And then when you report your July membership, it will sh put a check mark in there. It also shows the number of members in your club, 
regular members, associate members, and any other special type of members that you might have. Uh, this box says service activities. Service activities used to be reported in my LCI. Now they're reported in my line, so there is no info in that box. This box, the final one, shows my officers. That is your district officers. And there's a second page where you will see additional district officers in there. And those officers will change as <coughs> July 1. Now, uh, <clears throat> some of the th other things that you will do here, in my LCI, you can add new members, you can drop members, you can add your officers, et cetera. And for all of you that are new and are, will not be in office until July 1, which is day after tomorrow, you can go to the training center and actually anybody can go to the training center. So you click on support, click on training center, and it will bring up a portal where you can actually work in it and um, try things and not cause any problems. As you will see here, there's three menu or four four items, three pull down menus. The My Club info is where you're gonna use it most of the time. If you click on your members, it'll bring up a list of all your members. And here's an opportunity if you wanna report no changes for the month, you can do it there. You could also do it on the front page where I showed you. Uh, you can edit a member, drop a member. If you have family membership in your club, you create the family unit here, you can view a history of the member. If so, and if you're going to add a new member, you click add new member and it will bring up the information to complete the addition of the new member. So that's pretty self explanatory once you get there. Uh, you just go down and when, once you get to the bottom, you just click save. I'm going to go back. Uh, officers. This will show your club officers. And each year, the secretary is responsible for entering the new officers for the next year. So here, this current year, next year, past year. So if you're entering your officers for the next year, you would click on next year and put them in here. As you see, all the spots are empty. So if I wanted to add an officer, all I do is click add officer. It says none is selected, it says select a member. And I'll go down here and find the member that I want to add as president click on him and save. I assigned Jim as president. And if you go back now, he's listed as the president for your club. And now this is in the practice area. So anything you do, uh, it's not gonna affect anything on the main page. So basically that's how you add officers. If you have any local titles, which could be a tail twister or anything else that, that might not be as a regular club officer. Lion Tamer, I believe, is in there. Uh, you can add, put in the officer title, save, and then add it in. Okay. Um, other information here. Um, you can do statements and dues. There are some reports that you can do. Uh, your monthly membership report is here. You can have a club roster. Uh, you can print off a club attendance sheet if you want to do that for meetings. There's a lot of different things in here. You can just look through it. And, and as always, if you find something that you don't understand, reach out to uh, someone. They can, they'll be able to help you either your previous secretary or 
member of the GAP team, uh, we'll be happy to help you. Under my district, it shows the clubs, the district profile, the officers. So if you click on that, it'll show all the district clubs with pertinent information as to who the president is, um, when they meet, um, and a con contact information for the president. And multiple district, that's not something that you would probably ever use, but you can explore that if you want. Okay, um, I went through this rather quickly, but uh, if there are any questions, Adam, did we have any questions or anything so far? Uh, no, but I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add something in the chat with uh, the GAT team's email addresses and as well as yours. Okay, sounds good. And we got a late late uh, entry. It looks like. Yeah, we have someone. Oh, I think he was there before. Just okay. coming in again. Okay. Now I'm going to get out of that and go back to my home screen, which is where we started. Now up in the upper right hand or left hand corner, I don't know right from left. Um, it says return to your line account. So if you click on that, it should take you back to the member portal. And we'll wait while it does that. And then you can select another place to go if you want, if you want to go to somewhere else, but we're going to go to my line. So we'll click on that. And it brings up your home page. On your home page is a metric summary, which was on the member portal as well. It has your club's signature activities and upcoming activities for your club. And there are also, as you see here, these three are McFarland activities, which is my club. Now over here is a Deerfield activity and here is a Highland activity. Um, the reason those show up on your signature activities or on your upcoming activities is because the Deerfield, when Andy created this, he invited either me or someone or all the members of our club to this event. So it will show when any member of our club signs on and sees these activities. Same with the uh, uh, Our Town celebration from uh, Highland. Now I'll show you where to do this as we go through planning a future activity. But the reason that we're using MyLine is to report service activities. So we're gonna spend some time on that and I'll go through all the uh, different scenarios for reporting a past activity. So we'll click on that and this shows a lot of information here for, since I'm a district officer, a lot of this shows and it will not show on yours, but the main thing here is reporting. You use this report button to start an activity report. So we'll click on that and it'll bring up basically a one page sheet that you can fill out. Now, I recommend that you have the information to fill this out when you go into this. So um, don't go into it and fill out the activity and get down to the other information and go, oh, I don't have that. Know what information you need and uh, have it ready uh, either on a some notes that you've made on the activity or if you keep a spreadsheet on your activities, however you keep track of your club activities. So anyway, 
the first thing you want to do is put in an activity name and we're just going to call this test activity. And if you notice here, it says anything that's pink is required to save as a draft and anything with an asterisk is required to save as a report. So after you've put in the name of your activity, the next portion is activity level number one. And this should all be pre-filled for you when you log in. It should say club and it should have your club name. It has the multiple district and the district. You go on to activity details. If you signed in, it's going to have your name here. You need to fill in the duration of the activity. If it's a single day, just click on it and put in the date. If it's a multiple day event, click on the start date, June 1st. The end date, June 2nd. Simple as that. The next is activity type and it has a pull down menu. Service activity, fundraiser, meeting, or donation. And we're going to, I'm going to do a little bit on each one of these because the following questions change somewhat depending on which one of these you select. We'll start with the service activity. Is this a signature activity? Is it something you do regularly? Is it something you do every year? Uh, is it you do it multiple times during a year. Um, if it is, say yes, it's a signature activity. If it's something you do once a year, but it's something you're known for, it's still a signature activity. So check that. Is it funded by an LCIF grant? Probably not. So you can just leave that blank. The next is the cause. And we yeah, everyone knows the global causes, hunger, environment, childhood cancer, diabetes, vision, and other. So select one of those, whatever it is, we'll just say it's environment. And depending on what you select here, it will have a different pull down menu for each of those. See, this says tree planting, clean water, environment, blah, blah, blah. If we go back here and change that to hunger, your pull down menu will be food collection, meal preparation, gardens, hunger awareness, other. So we'll just do hunger awareness education. The next question is the number of people served. That's a subjective number. If you had a, have an event and know the attendance, you can use that. Otherwise it's pretty much an estimate. Uh, you try to, if for like a food drive, you can figure out how many meals you provided. So that's how many people you served. Uh, if you do a vision screening, that's pretty easy. You know how many people you screened. So uh, the cap on that is 3,000. If you do a highway cleanup, that's, and, you're, and there's 7,000 people in your town, well, you did serve all 7,000 of those people in some way by cleaning up the highway that they see, but you only get credit for 3,000. Uh, and in most cases, that's probably fairly accurate. Uh, so you put in the number of people, we'll just say 10. How many volunteers did you have? If you had 15 lions and four non-lion volunteers, uh, I said 15 and four, so you'd still, you'd have 19 volunteers. If they each work two hours, 38 hours. Additional metrics. You may or may not have additional metrics. Uh, we'll click yes, so you can just see what it is. Now, if you raised some funds while you were doing this and you donated them, say you raised $100, and you're gonna donate them to the food pantry. Put in the food pantry. And if you were in the funds raised, you raised $100 and you gave it all away. 
So that completes that part of it. Now, we're gonna go back. That's a service activity. Let's do a fundraiser. Is it a signature fundraiser? Probably, you do it every year, signature. The cause, fundraisers are a little more difficult. If you do something for a fundraiser for hunger, that's fine, you can call it that. If you use it for multiple things, uh, you, it just goes in your general fund to use for donations, click other. Project type, I would then say other as well. And here's, if you had a fundraiser, the amount of funds that you raised, $100, additional metrics, number of people served, number of volunteers, volunteer hours, the funds that you donated, and who the receiving organization was. So those are the questions that they ask about the fundraiser. The next one is a meeting and we all have meetings. We're at a meeting right now. The total number of attendees, total number of volunteers, additional metrics, people served, funds donated, the organization receiving funds raised, for a meeting, you probably will not use those. So you don't need to click that box. The last one is a donation. And yes, we do and can report donations. Signature activity, again, is it something that you give to every year? Um, if it is, click it. If not, don't worry about it. The cause, the donation went to which one of these causes? So if it went to diabetes, click diabetes, the funds donated. And then if, you, if you're just paying it out of your treasury, out of your activity account, you probably will not have volunteers or volunteer hours, but you can put in the name of the organization receiving the donation and the funds, uh, it's funds raised. So you've already put up the funds donated up here, but you put in the organization receiving a donation. And if you know how many people it serves, a donation, it's hard to say. If you give $150 to an organization, it's subjective. You could put down that it serves 10 people or you can put down that it serves one person, whatever. It's just, it's a, it's a guess on our part and it's just, it's supposed to be a reasonable, reasonable guess as to how many people you serve with that donation. So we've gone through the four different types, service activity, fundraiser, meeting and donation. Once you've completed that section, you go to the sharing portion. Who can see this report. It defaults to everyone. That way lions from all over the world can see it. If you don't wanna share that information, you can restrict it to the multiple district, which would mean anyone in Wisconsin could see it, or the district, which means only our district could see it, or you can restrict it to club, which means only members of your club could see it. The reason that you want or would like everyone to see, especially your service activities, if you don't want to let everyone know about your donations, you don't have to. Um, but the reason you would like everyone to see your, especially your service activities and fundraisers is so other clubs can see what you're doing. They can learn from what you're doing and in vice, vice versa, if you check out what other clubs are doing, you can see the type of fundraisers and type of service projects that they do. And I'll show you a little bit more about that when we get to the activities screen and where you can find out what other clubs are doing. And then in section four, 
You can tell your story about the activity, uh, service project, donation, whatever it was. It doesn't have to be long, but just a description of the activity that you're reporting. And then if you took photos at your event or activity, you can upload a photo here. You click upload, it will take you to your computer where you can find the photo and upload it. And once it's here, you can save this as a draft. And I recommend that if you've completed everything, don't save it as a draft, hit report. I'm not gonna hit report since this is a test activity. So um, if it was a real activity, I would just click report now because I have everything in here. And um, it is nice to have photos of your activity if you can put it in, but that's not necessarily the default photo put in for everything. So as you'll see when we get to the next part. Uh, any questions on this? Anything, Adam? No, I haven't seen anything in the okay. chat. Very good. <laughs> We're going to move on now to planning a future activity. And a future activity is something that will take place in the future. Most likely what you're going to put in here is a service activity, a fundraiser, or a meeting. Um, let's just say we're going to put in a fundraiser. So you click on the box that you want, click continue. It will ask you what your activity will impact. Hunger, environment, childhood cancer, diabetes, vision, other. A uh, fundraiser, you may not know. A service activity, you would definitely know which one it was going to affect. So we'll just say other. And then you need to click continue. And it's going to be another other service activity and continue. Now, this will be a club project. This is my club. The activity name, you can put in whatever it's going to be. I'll just put in this since it's already there. Is this a signature activity? Yes, it's one that we do all the time. It'll ask you where it's going to be. And I'm just gonna, and I'll just put this in so we have a place to put in. And it, when you type in the city, it should bring up your town. Time, start date, and so on. So you can just click on the calendar. I'm gonna, this is gonna be for July. So we'll do it on the 21st. And the time, it's gonna be 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, it's a food cart night, so I just, I'm just gonna put something there. And who do you want to see this? And this, if it's a future activity, I would say you want everyone to see it because you want them to know that it's coming. Now, one thing about if planning a future activity, anybody in your club can put this in as long as they have a Lion account. So that's the reason why every Lion should have an account. If they're a committee chair, if they're a VP that uh, is head of a, a fundraiser or a service activity or a member of the club that is in charge of one of those things, they should be able to put it in here. So they should have a line account so that they can put in a future activity. So once that is in, click continue. And this is where you can invite people. You, if, for example, I want to invite the clubs in my zone to come to this event, I would click my own club and then go down and find the other clubs in my zone. Cross Plains is in my zone. Uh, Oregon, Brooklyn is in my 
zone. Stoughton is in my zone and Deerfield. So I, once I did that, it populated this invites over here with all the names of all the members in each of those clubs that has an email address registered with LCI. So in your member record, they have, this will be sent to all of those members with the email address. And basically what the invitation will say is, uh, I have invited them to my food cart frenzy on a certain night. It'll say the date, the time, the place, et cetera. And if they wanna find out more information about it, they can contact you or they can go to uh, the website, your club website and find out more. Uh, so, cause it does have your, con your information there as well as who invited them. So I'm gonna X this cause I don't wanna do that, but cause once you click continue, all the invitations are sent to all of these people. So I'm gonna go back and okay. So it cleared all of those out. Once you're done with that, you click continue and it will give you a summary of the event and if you sent invitations, it will say here who all the invitations were sent to. And then when you're happy with that, you click submit. I'm going to X out of that because I don't want to create that activity. Okay. <clears throat> If you're doing a service activity, say it's a hunger project, it will let you select, it will give you options to collect the, to select the type of that it is. If you're doing a food drive, it would be a food collection and all the details and so on, they're all the same as we put in for the other one. So it is, it is easy to do, uh, but it does take a few steps to getting it in. It's not as simple as reporting the past activity, but it is a good way to invite other clubs to your events. If you wanna send an invitation to every member in a district, you can do it through this as well. Okay, the next tab is activities. And this has a lot of information in here and it's, and it's where you can find out what is going on in your district or multiple district or the US. Uh, this defaults when you come into it, it has your club upcoming activities. So as you can see, I have four upcoming activities. Now, if you click on past activities, and that's where you can really find a lot of information. Uh, these are all our club activities. So uh, what we want to look at, I'm going to click on District 27 D1, the second tab. And this will show all the activities that have occurred in the district. And as you can see here, there's 242 pages of activities. There's 16 activities on a page. So that's a lot of activities. You can narrow it down by selecting a checkbox. Uh, activity level, if you want club activities, district activities, multiple district. But if you want to look up fundraisers to see what other clubs are doing as fundraisers in the district, you can click on fundraiser. And it will show you all the fundraisers that have happened in the district. There's 15 pages of 16, so that's 196 fundraisers that you can peruse through. 
Service activities, if you're looking for a service activity, you can do the same thing. Now, if you're looking for, say, a diabetes service activity, you can go down here, click diabetes, and go through all the diabetes activities that have been done in the district this past year. And it actually, I do believe, goes back. See, this goes all the way back. These are 2019, so you're not limited to just this past year. Bruce, so there's, have, yes. Bruce, we have a good question in the, uh, in the chat. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to default to you. Uh, Ann Alexander is asking, do your future activities then show up under activities when they have already happened? Yes, they do. Let's just go back home here. Okay. If you have upcoming activities, I got to uncheck all these boxes. Okay. If you have upcoming activities, they will show here. Now, if you've had put in a future activity, um, here's one, this, I'm just going to show you this. It's food cart frenzy. We put that in as a future activity. It happened on June 16th. Now, when you click on this after June 16th, it will show up here, but it will have a red spot here instead of a green spot and it will say unreported. So if you click on that, it will take you to the report screen and you can report that activity right there and complete the information for the all, whatever it is, um, people served, volunteers, volunteer hours, all of that stuff, you can complete that right there. So hopefully that answers your question. It will show up here in the past activities, but if it hasn't been reported, it will show up as unreported. And when you see that, you wanna make sure that you report it. Because if, if we do this, I can check this box. We have none as a club, but here are district activities that have, are unreported. They haven't completed it. They put it in as a future activity and didn't complete it, or they put it in and saved it as a draft. And so they need to complete these. And as you can see, there's there were 16, 20, 24 um, activities that have not been reported, completed, and some of them go back to September of 2020. So that is something that you want to check regularly for your club. And basically for your club, it's going to show up here. And if you collect, put in unreported, if you have no unreported, it's going to show blank like this. Okay. Uh, anything else, Adam? Any other questions? No, I think that answered Ann's question. She says thank okay. you. Okay. The last section here is the metrics. And that is a summary. The same thing you saw on the home page, except with a couple more bars. People served, activities completed, volunteer hours, funds donated, funds raised. And you can click on the district to see what the district has done over the year, etc. Here is a pull down menu. You can look at other years. So you can look to see how you compared to last year. You can look to see how you compared to the year before. So there's information there. Uh, you can export this information to a spreadsheet. 
Uh, I have never done so, so I don't know how accurate that is, but um, I think it does, it does work or I would have heard about that. Now down below are the details of what you have up here. So I have for my club from July 1st of 2020 to June 30th of 2021. These are all the activities, service activities, fundraisers, meetings, and donations that we've done over the last year. Now, here it shows people served. So that's what you're looking at. Service activities, it changes to the number of service activities that you've done. Volunteer hours, how many volunteer hours you've had. And those numbers should match the totals down here should match the numbers up there. The funds donated and it matches up there. Funds raised matches what's up there. You can sort these in many different ways. Each of them are sortable. They each have an arrow up arrow from zero to uh, zero up or from, if you wanna sort it the other way, let's change this to service activity. I guess we don't have any diabetes activities. Oh, I'm under funds raised, service activities. Make sure you get everything the way you want it. So we did one diabetes service activity. Environment, we did several, 14, et cetera. So you can check and see where your club is. And over here, it lists all of these. And if you click on this, it will take you to the activity that was reported. It says when it was reported, October 10th, it shows how many people volunteered, how many people you served, et cetera, what you did, et cetera. So you can actually edit the activity or copy the activity as well. And we'll go back to the metrics. One thing that I wanted to show you in here, you have past activities. You don't have to recreate the wheel for everything. Um, I'm just going to take this one. It's a platelets donation. We have several members that donate platelets. So this was the activity from June 20th. Okay. Here it shows that you can duplicate this activity if you want. If you have another service project just like that one, you hit duplicate. All you have to do is put in the new date, say June 29th. And everything else is probably the same if it's a duplicate. You go down and all you do is hit report. So you don't have to go in and, and put in the whole service project each time. You can duplicate. I'm going to go back because I don't want to duplicate that. Uh, that's especially handy for meetings and so on. If you put in a future meeting and you want to put in all your club meetings, you can just hit duplicate and put in the new date. So you can put in each monthly meeting all at once if you want. Um, anything else, Adam, that I'm missing? Well, I think you did a pretty good job. I'm just trying to think as, I, as you're asking me that, but I think you uh, kind of covered that. Okay. Uh, but anyway, there's, there's a lot of things that you can find in here. The main thing is that you learn how to report the past activity. And as long as you, like I just did, I'm in the live thing. I just, I played around a lot, but I didn't report anything. I just went back or 
X'd out of it. You can do that all you want in here and not affect anything until you hit report. That's the only time you're going to affect anything. So don't be afraid to go in and play around and just see what each of these allows you to do. There, you know, you might find something that really helps you in there. And uh, um, it's, it's worth just playing around and looking, see what you can find. Um, now, that pretty much concludes this. Uh, but Adam put in the contact information for the GAT team and for myself. And please make note of that. Uh, we're here to help. Um, and if you need help, don't be afraid to ask. Now, there are, I'm not going to kid you, there are problems that come up with my lion and my LCI. Uh, if you run into something, uh, give us a call. There is a tutorial on our website, my lion tutorial that is updated regularly every time there are new features or changes put in. So uh, you can download that. It's in a PDF format and it's my lion tutorial under training. Um, but please feel free to contact us. Um, that's sort of what we're here for, to help you guys do better. Now, if there are any questions or anything about my LCI, my lion, any problems or anything that anyone has had or something they've run into that they don't know how to get around, um, please unmute yourself and let us know. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna sound like a broken record, quick, and kind of reiterate what Bruce is saying. You know, absolutely, we're we're here to help you, and we want to see you guys be successful. So please reach out to us if you're having problems. Um, we rely a lot on you know what you guys are reporting to kind of share with other clubs as we attend, as the GAD team attends zone meetings or region meetings, um, or even just talking with other officers who are, you know, wondering you know, anything from, hey, how do I, how, how do we go about recruiting members or, um, you know, we're really struggling with fundraisers. Do you have any ideas? Um, you know, seeing that kind of stuff reported in my lion or seeing things you guys are doing, you know, seeing who's having success and knowing about those successes in my LCI um, really helps uh, us share, share with other clubs and other club officers who's, who's, uh, really having good success with something and maybe it's something that they can try. And going forward, if, if you have a problem and can't figure it out, uh, next year I'm going to serve as district administrator. So as district administrator, I would be able to actually go on and help you on your own page. Uh, in my LCI or my Lion. Uh, if you have any uh, problems that you can't resolve or whatever, uh, if you can't get something in, uh, please reach out because I'll be glad to help you. And it doesn't take long usually to, to solve the problem. So if there are no other questions. I guess I would just like to thank everybody for attending. And uh, I hope that uh, I helped you in a, a little bit. And good luck in your upcoming year as president, secretary, club service chair, or club administrator. So good luck to you all. And thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. You're very welcome. Have a good night, Thank everyone. Bruce. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce. Thank you. Bruce, will you yep. stay on for a minute? We do have one question. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to stay on and uh, see if we can help her. Okay.
Found it. <laughs> you found it. Okay. I was going to see if I could ask you on mute, but okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Bruce and, and Adam, thank you very much. I'm sorry. I was the one that, that came in a little bit late. It was like 10 after six. And I'm like, okay, I've got to be ready for seven. And all of a sudden it was like seven, 11. And I went, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I know how that goes. I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, and I, I, my wife reminded me about five minutes before I was supposed to be there. So. Supposed to be there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm the incoming president. Yes. And this is the first I've heard of any of this. Okay. Of any of this, and yep. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And I've been, you know, we have three vice presidents. So I've been active for six years getting ready to be president. And I'm just now finding out about this has me mm -hmm. a, a little nervous here. Well, so as you were going through the unreported past activities, I noticed that I, I saw two from January for our club, the Beloit Evening Lions, that has not been reported. And so um, I was wondering if you could go back to that screen because I don't even know if I have an account number. No one ever told me. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. I'm like, now, okay, we're, we might be in trouble here. <laughs> okay. As, as president, there are, there are four club members are four offices that have the ability to report in my line. Anybody can plan a future activity, but to finalize okay. the report, you need to be the secretary, okay. the administrator, the uh -huh. club service chair, or the president. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, past activities, district, and I'm gonna do unreported. Saw so them on the back page, uh, the, the last page. Okay. It like Larry had started them. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Oop, yeah. Oop. Yeah. Yep. See, so, the Boys and Girls Club is one, and Planting Trees is another, and then okay. our. Um, okay. I'm just going to click. Awareness. Okay. I'm just going to click on one of these. This one is the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. So. Uh, let's oh, see. he got he got the error message. Yeah, he got an error message. So, you know, do you think that kept him from reporting that? It could I have. Know, um, but when we got installed on the eighth, he was talking to Tammy because he was trying to report our um, meals on wheels. And it won't, he said that it was not allowing him to put that in. So I'm wondering if this might be what's happening to him here. It could be. I know I've helped, helped Larry before a couple of times. And basically, this one looks like it's all okay, but it was probably saved as a draft now. Okay. And I'm going to just Bruce. click on report. And here it is. Funds donated. And that a, would be correct. It was a donation, and you didn't put in an amount of funds. Oh, so okay. That's, that's what's missing on this one. Okay. So we'll save that as a draft. So we need a dollar. Yeah. Now, <laughs> let's go back. And we'll go to... The diabetes one, uh, right Right. Right there. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. That one. Same thing. It's it's put in as a donation, but there's no mm -hmm. amount. It, okay. So that was the donation. That was actually, I'll have to ask him because I yeah. actually was involved in that, and that was a service activity. Okay. So, so. if it was a service activity, you don't. You, it's put in as a donation. So okay. Okay. So that may be the problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then there was one other one. A youth exchange. Yeah. And that one. Four. That one shows as a donation with no funds donated. 
Okay. So. That might look to be the, the issue. That looks to be the bugaboo. And usually when they show up, you can click on it and see what it is. And it'll, it'll if you try to report it, it's going to yep. come okay. up and say, boom. All right. Okay. So you, you'll you know what it is then. But he may have just saved it as a draft. I don't know. And then, yeah. And then, went, okay. And now he was I waiting. Know. And maybe he was waiting for the amount of funds to be donated. Is it and, possible he went back and re, uh, reported it as a past activity after the fact? Yeah, it could mm -hmm. be. And we could, we could check that. Let's see. God, the last thing I want to do on my first day as president is go, Larry, she <laughs> <laughs> No, that's, that's fine. Uh, let's. Un yeah, to be and honest, it's not, it's not uncommon that presidents, uh, this is the first they're hearing about this. Oh, um, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, usually, usually, historically, this is something that the secretaries just do in their club and take yeah. Uh, I, to be honest, I've never had a president sign up in my club for this. <laughs> oh, it's a wealth of information. I love it. <laughs> because you know what? I'm going to snap up some of these ideas for fundraisers. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at those that have been reported. Let's see. That's Bullet Noon. Yeah, Charlene's real good about getting it. Oh, wait, there's one yeah. that's reported right there. Vision screening. You're in 2019, Bruce. Yeah, well, see, so yeah, here's January 20. 20, yeah. Page one. Yeah. See, these are all Beloit noon by Chuck. Rack. Yeah. Yeah, Chuck or Charlene. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have I don't have those by Larry. So okay. they they are open, so they should be completed, and then um, they will be good. Okay. So now, if you if you open those up, put in the dollar amount of the donation, whatever okay. you want to put in there. And then uh, hit report, and they should be good. They will okay, show excellent. up. Thank you. Now, should I get my account number from Larry? Yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, one will be on your uh, either your state newspaper, or we can we can probably look it up quick. Yeah. What is that shop Japan? I saw that when I was signed in too. Oh yeah, it's something new that just uh, showed up. Kind of like connect. <laughs> yeah. Bloyd noon, right? No, evening. Bloyd evening. Bloyd evening, okay. And I'm probably at the bottom, Ryan. Yeah, next page. Okay. Yep, there I Your am. Our number is 368 okay. 6188. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. I look forward to getting started. <laughs> and if you get if you get stuck or have a problem when you get started, don't be afraid to call email. Um, I wrote whatever. both of your emails down already. So okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yep, you're, you're welcome. Very welcome. Okay. Okay. I'm leaving you now. Very good. Do you have anything else, Adam? I got nothing. Okay. Good presentation, Bruce. Thank you. Yeah. I see we Dwayne is still here. Did you have anything, Dwayne, that you needed to ask? Uh, you Dwayne, to, you're muted. You have, you're muted, so I have to unmute. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. So, oh, yep, no, no real questions. I guess just uh, I'll get my ID number or whatever. And okay. Figure it out so we can get this. Very report. good. If you've, got a, if you've got a Lion magazine from International, it's right on there above your name. Okay. <laughs> and if not, I have my secretary, Tate. Yep. Terry Desjardins will. Yeah, take Terry can find it. it for you. Yeah, he's a good man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good, Dwayne. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah, you too. Okay, Adam, we'll see you later. Yep. We'll see you. Good job. Thank you. I've got it recorded, so I'll, I don't know, if we want to put it out there or whatever on YouTube for anybody else who wants it, I guess. It might be worth, yeah, it might be worth doing that so we can put it up on the website. I'm, yeah. I'm still behind on officer training, but that'll get there eventually. Yeah, not too worried about it. We're, we're, we made it through the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Very good. Thanks, Adam. Yep, talk to you later. Yeah, bye now.